I'm going to talk about eight questions that I ask married couples when they come in for counseling. And I'm going to walk you through these eight questions, but even if you're not married, uh, it has a lot to do with dialogue. So you can learn something no matter what stage of life you're in. So here's what I do. Uh, Bob and Mary come into my office and they tell me they've got some problems in their marriage. And I say to Bob, hey Bob, tell me, what do you believe you have contributed to the demise of this relationship? That's question number one, all right? And he says, I've got an anger problem. Question number two, I say to Mary, Mary, do you believe that's true that Bob has an anger problem? Just yes or no? She says, yes, I do. I agree with that. Question number three, I ask Mary what she believes she's contributed to the demise of the relationship. And she says, I spend too much. I then ask Bob, Bob, number four, do you agree that Mary spends too much? And he says, yes, I do. So we're, we're halfway through the questioning. I then turn to Mary, question number five, and I say, Mary, what else do you believe Bob has contributed to the demise of the relationship that he didn't mention? He mentioned his anger, but what else? And she says, uh, he works too long. And I say to Bob, Bob, is it true? Question number six, that you work too long. And he says, yeah, that's, yeah, that, 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 that's true. I then say to Bob, what do you believe, question number seven, that Mary left out? And he says, she complains too much. Question number eight, I turn to Mary and I say to Mary, is it true that you complain too much? And she kind of hems and haws and says, yeah, I do. Let me tell you why I go through that particular scenario. Because people are pretty quick to admit to things that are pretty obvious. They'll say, yeah, I've got an anger problem or I've got a spending problem. But then their spouse says, yeah, but you've also got this that you didn't mention. And the this might very well be the real key to solving the problem. Because the first two are obvious, they're on the surface, they both agree. When you start probing and say, what else did they leave out? And they bring that up and they kind of hem and haw and say, yeah, that's true. That's what I'm going after. I want to know what it was that they left out and why did they leave it out? Because they probably didn't think that it was a major issue when in fact it's a gnarling issue to the spouse and one that the spouse has been harboring. And so now we've got some place to go. Now I'll tell you why this is important. I think that every single married couple, no matter how old you are, need to keep short accounts. Because the longer you sweep things under the carpet, the less likely you're going to talk about it until it's too late or you're in serious counseling and there's a lot of tension and anger and bitterness that's built up for a long time. Years ago, I took my wife on a walk or maybe we were out someplace and I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, in our marriage, what is it that I do that bothers you that you've never really told me or talked much about that maybe you're harboring? And without hesitation, she said, you know, whenever we're in a crowd, particularly around a, a people at church, you're the big guy. You're, you're, the, you're the pastor and everybody wants your opinion. And as soon as church is over, whatever, everybody's gathered around you. Or we could be in a small group. Everybody wants to know your opinion. And I feel left out. I've got an opinion too. Uh, I, I've been to Bible college. As a matter of fact, you've only been to two years of Bible college and I've been to four years of Bible college. She reminds me of that from time to time. So uh, I begin to realize, do I really do that? Sure enough, I just, my tendency, my personality is just to walk right in and sort of take over. Meanwhile, she's standing behind me all this time through the years thinking, what part do I even play in this? And we've got a good marriage. But that was something she was harboring. We had to talk through that. And I've had to make a conscious effort that when I'm in a crowd and she's there, that I bring her into the picture. So here's an assignment if you're willing to take it. I can assure you that in your marriage, your spouse has something that he or she would like corrected in you. 
There's no question about it. But sometimes we just don't go there. It's just not worth the hassle. But meanwhile, there's mild angst or anger or bitterness that just sort of wells up a little bit. And it's necessary to get this thing out uh, so that it doesn't fester through the years. And you find out later that everything is falling apart. Matter of fact, I just heard of a marriage uh, of a good friend of mine and they're getting divorced and I'm shocked. I'm absolutely stunned. They just started digging up a bunch of stuff from all these years and now it's come to the surface. So here's what I would suggest. I would suggest that you find a good time where both of you are in agreement to discuss this. And you must be open and teachable. You must remove pride right away when you're gonna sit down to discuss this. You must be willing to step into the other person's world because the way they see life is not how you see life. I've learned this a lot by working with staff and elders and so many people I've talked to through the years, I realize they see life very differently than I see life. My tendency is to think, but the way I see life is right. <laughs> and that's simply not true. But I tend to think that way. How can, how can you not see things my way? You gotta remove the pride, you gotta step into their world, and then you've gotta have that discussion with the willingness to listen and make the necessary corrections. It's not gonna be easy, but it's worth it. It just might save your marriage and a lot of expense in unnecessary counseling. Thanks for watching.